Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 16 of my web design and programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to focus in more on MySQL and talk about some basic queries you can issue, as well as how to insert information into your database, either by hand or through the use of comma separated value files. Log. First, we need to log into MySQL. And if you didn't see the previous tutorials, most definitely check those out. Otherwise, this will not make any sense. And I'm going to use my customer table. And since the last tutorials, I went in and added a couple more tables to this specific database. And if I show you customer table, you can see here I've split up the name into first name, last name, street, city. I should probably make city into a separate table because I'm going to be entering the same values, but I didn't for now. And I did split state out into a separate table. And here's zip code and there's password, phone order, and customer ID. These are all references that we talked about in the previous tutorial. And if I come in here, I can actually show you the state table that I created. And if you wanted to insert values by hand into this table, this is how you could do it. Now you could either put in here state comma state underscore ID like that but I'm gonna choose not to do that. Instead, just put values. Otherwise, you would put it right here, what I was just typing in. And let's say I just wanna put in PA for right now, and I'm gonna insert null because this is gonna auto increment for me. And let's say that I also put in West Virginia null. And I was able to insert those values in there and to show them, I'm just going to query the database and say, show me everything from the table named state. And you can see that it input those two values in there. I previously had two other IDs set up. And you can see here, if you delete values out of a table, that it's going to continue to auto increment e even though those values no longer are located there. So that's just a note that you can think on. So that's how you would input those that information just by hand. And another thing I put in here was a table called phone. And just to make sure you get it, insert into phone values. And here I'm gonna put in null because this is gonna auto increment for me. And then I'm gonna put in a string which is gonna be the telephone number. And I'm gonna designate this as a home telephone number. And again, I can show everything in here just by typing that in. You can see it auto incremented, created one, and put telephone number in here and the phone type. So that's one way to input information, but you could also input it in other ways. So for example, let's say that I was entering in different product types, ATM supplies, calculators, cash registers, and so forth, and this is what we call comma-separated value file, or a CSV. And you could, normally what you do is you input this information into a spreadsheet, and then you save it as a CSV file, and then you want to make sure that you delimit the values, the separation between these values with a comma, and all text with single quotes most of the time. Okay, so if I have this guy right here and I want to input him into my database, how exactly do I do that? I'm going to show you. And here you're going to see how to actually open the database and input values and so forth and so on. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to define some constants being database user, or it's going to be database user ID. And you've seen me type this in a whole bunch of times. And then this file should be hidden, but for now, I'm not going to hide it. Database password, and you're gonna see the password I've been typing in, but I never use it for anything else because I'm not stupid. Then you need to define another constant, which is gonna be database host. Make sure you put the quotes around that. And in my circumstances, it's gonna be local host. Define database name, and this is going to be the name that you're gonna be working with. So, in my circumstance, this is going to be customer. And then you want to connect to the database. And I'm going to put a check in here with an if statement to make sure that I'm able to connect. Otherwise, it's going to give me an error message. And you do that with the MySQL underscore connect function. And then you would just pass it all of the constants that you just set up previously. So what this is going to do is if this does connect, it's going to proceed into this if statement, the following if statement. And here, I'm going to check that I'm able to actually connect to the specific database that I defined. And if not, I'm going to trigger an error that I was unable to select that database. Then I'm going to put a break statement in here. Of course, you don't have to type this specific format here. This is just what I'm using. And then I'm going to concatenate at the end of this the actual error. And of course, you would want to hide this. This isn't something that you would do whenever you were actually 
going to deploy this for the public to use. This is something you're going to use whenever you're testing your database to make sure that it works. And if it does trigger that error, I want to exit out. I'm going to close off that if statement and then else trigger error. So if I get down to this point, what this means is I was unable to connect to MySQL. So I want to make sure that I'm alerted that I was unable to connect to MySQL and then print that error out the screen as well. And then exit out of the program and close that off. Otherwise, I can assume that if I didn't get any errors there that I was able to open the connection to the database. So then what I want to do is I want to open a handler to the CSV file that I created because I'm going to pull all that information into my database. And how I'm going to do this is with a while loop. Move this up on the screen so you can actually see it. And what this is going to do is pull all that information from that CSV file with the fget CSV function. And all I'm going to do is point it towards the handler for that file. Type in, I previously talked about this in previous tutorials, so I'm going to type in the maximum number of characters that I expect. And then between quotes, I'm going to define the delimiter that is going to separate these values in the CSV file, which is going to be a comma, comma separated values. Makes sense. So as long as there is still information in there, this while loop is going to continue to cycle. Then I want to combine all the values and separate them with a comma and save them to this file called get data. And I'm going to use the implode function here. And I'm going to say that all these values are separated with a comma. And the name of this array in this situation, info is an array. So I want to put in the array right inside of there. And then I'm going to create a query that I am going to use. It's the insert SQL keyword. And I'm going to say I want to insert into the table called manufacturer. And whenever you're doing this, it normally makes sense to actually type the values in, in this situation. I didn't do it previously because I wanted to show you the different ways to use the insert function. Values, and then I'm gonna take all the information that's stored in get data and create that query. And if you're wondering what this is, these are just the brackets that we saw previously whenever we were querying MySQL, just like we did right here. See, these are the brackets, there's a bracket, and there's another bracket. Well, I need to put them into the query. This is just sending a query to MySQL just like we previously did it. I just have to save it, and I'm going to echo that query out to the screen just so you can see the query is being entered and separate them with a break just so it's easier to see exactly what's going on. And then to actually issue the query, MySQL query, and pass it the query that you just created. And then again in test mode, before this guy's live, I always do all this error handling to make sure that everything's coming through here perfectly. Throw another break statement in there, MySQL error. And that's it. That is how you access the database, and that is how you query the database from PHP. And then after you're done, you call the MySQL close function, and that closes the connection to the database. And if I save this file and then jump over here, you can see that it printed all this information out to the screen. These are all the queries that I provided on the database. And if we jump over to the database itself, you can see that all that information is going to be entered, and I'm going to do that now. First, I'll show the actual table, the manufacturer, and then if I want to output the screen, all of the information that I just input into manufacturer, the table manufacturer, you can see that all that information is there. So we were able to pull all that information over and stick it in the database. So very useful. And if I also wanted to be able, let's say, just describe customer. You can see there's the customer information. If I want to be able to manually inside of MySQL insert information into customer, I just go insert into the name of the table I want to enter information into. Values, these are all sh should be uppercase, but they don't have to be, obviously. And then I'm going to put in all of my values, and you can see them up above. And because I put them in order, I don't have to define where I want these values to be entered. They'll just go right in based off of the order that I enter. Three is going to be my state code, my identification number for that, made up zip code. And here I'm using a function called SHA. And what it does is it takes a password and automatically converts it into a 40 character encrypted code, no matter what is entered. So it's a nice function that's available to you in MySQL. And you're going to see more of this later. And there's my telephone number, the code for it. 
And then these last two are going to be null and go and output the screen. All the information that's currently stored in the cable called customer, I just do this. And you can see there's that 40 character long code. And I actually have to shrink this down for you to be able to see everything. But you can see first name, last name, street ID, so forth and so on. And all that information is stored inside of MySQL. So there is a bunch of different ways to enter information into your database in MySQL. And in the upcoming tutorials, I'm going to teach you every single other SQL keyword and every single other way you can interact with databases with MySQL. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.